Okay, welcome everybody to Mycroft Developer Sync, August 14th, 2020. So, when we last left our intrepid group of developers, uh, we were discussing um, potentially having a uh, regular meeting to uh, go over pull requests from the community. Uh, and uh, part of that being motivation for that being establishing a, uh, a regular, uh, you know, setting a limit at least on the, the amount of time a developer will uh, have to wait before getting, you know, an answer to their pull request, whether it's yes or no, or, you know, we're going to kick it down the road. But in any case, you know, at least trying to get back to every pull request in a timely fashion. So, um, so I think we can, uh, we can definitely discuss that. Is there uh, any other agenda items that uh, people want to talk about today? Um, yeah, I reviewed the pull request we discussed yesterday. I want to talk about that a little bit. Okay. Um, and what was the other thing? I think the other thing I, I can just I can work out with Ken offline, just you know, but as far as where the where on the uh, device, the NAS device, these things are gonna these wakeboards are gonna live, but. Okay. But yeah, so I think, yeah, that's it for me. Um, and I just wanted to make sure people saw the, the core release on Monday. Um, and essentially, both that we're preventing installation and uninstallation of skills, particularly on the Mark 1. So that seems like a pretty critical cool functionality. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, do you think this is going to impact your uh, 2008 release schedule? I mean, remember that it's not critical to get it out on a particular date, but we do want to keep up the practice of doing regular updates. Um, yeah, I need to. It depends on, on how much, how many of the breaking changes we want to get in. So, I mean, we can, at any point in time, we can cut the 2008 release, but it's just like, you know, is it worth it holding off? You know, if we've got 10, 10 items that we want to get in there before the before a breaking uh, breaking release, like which of those do we desperately want? Which of those don't really matter, and which ones would we hold up a release for? So I need to have a bit more of a look at that. I can update on Monday. Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, I think that seems like something that we should discuss with you know, well, at least with Chris and Ken, and you know, with the community as well as to you know what stuff do you want to yeah. get into the. The major release, the 2004 release, and then the or 2002 release. Sorry, and then you know, and do we want to turn it into a 2009 release? You know, for example. Um, yeah, 1908 came out in September, so <laughs> you know, it's, it's not it's not unheard of that you know that we get them out a little late if we're trying to get something in. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, uh, let's tackle um, the PR issue first because that's the most specific thing. Um, and it's the most, uh, you know, time sensitive, I think. So, uh, Chris Vare, you did a review of this major pull request. Um, what are your thoughts? So now that I reviewed it, um, I have different concerns. Um, current, so what we, what we need this functionality is knowing when a service is ready so that we can know that the device is ready. Um, this Chris, goes- You might want to turn off your video because uh, you're breaking out for me. I'm, I'm not able to hear you consistently. Okay. Is this better? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so I like to look at the PR. Um, it basically what it does is it introduces the, this class that does more than what we need it to, uh, meaning it checks for errors and starts and stops and other things. All we need really need is ready, and there's not really anything that uses it. It's kind of like a framework that you know. Right now, the only thing that uses on error, for example, is just uh, logging that there was an error. Um, the only thing that uses start is um you know logging that it started um the only and um i'm also concerned about how we're checking for readiness uh it looked like there was a some sort of loop that 
that checked for a ready state rather than maybe using events or ready events to say to tell that we're ready. So um, those are my two biggest concerns about it um, after seeing it. So I guess my question is, should we, since we have the potential of some sort of status service um, coming up, should we just implement a simpler device or 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 ready um, bus message for now? And I think that was kind of already done by Chris before this was done. That's what it kind of looked like. Um, or do we go ahead with something that I guess may or may not be used? And that's my concern with putting something like this in is that if nothing uses it, um, it's potential that nothing will ever use it. <laughs> um, you know, I, I like putting things in when we need them, not when we think we might need them in the future. Um, so those are my concerns. So why was why would the developer compelled to create this large amount of code for nothing? That that confuses me. Well, I mean, I, I think, and I talked to Gaz about this a little bit yesterday um, after I did the review. Um, you know, and he mentioned that, you know, it, it's a good idea and people, someone might use it. And sometimes you're, you feel compelled to put something out there that people might use and look, sounds like a good idea. And I've done this before in other code, but the lesson I've learned from that over time is that people aren't always going to use things you think they might want to use. <laughs> um, and to only implement things that you need rather than things you might, you might need. Um, but that does not to say that other, you know, people don't still think that something might be useful and want to put it in there anyway. So I think it's, it's, uh, you know, could have just been, you can, you can elaborate a little more guys maybe on, on the thought process behind it, but that's kind of what I get out of it. Um, yeah, so I think, uh, a big part of it, I think was, was thinking about um, groups that are using system D services or that want to use system D services. So um, Jinx that's doing the Microsoft OS um, is, is big on the system D uh, and it's potentially something that will be useful for us, but you know, we've got to decide about how we want to structure that. Um, and so the, um, we, we also recently added um, these service hooks, which are, you know, callback um, in each of the services that the that can be overwritten um, to provide that system D integration, um, uh, which line up with the status uh, hooks that Chris is talking about. So, you know, on start, on ready, on error, on stopping, um, those kinds of things. And so. Uh, yeah, it was to kind of tie those things together um, and give a give a method of of querying a service for whatever state it's in, not just readiness. Um, but in terms of this PR, the only piece that this PR uses is that checking readiness, um, and it does that in a loop in the enclosure um, uh, because it basically waits until everything should be ready and then starts a loop to 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 check that it actually is ready um, rather than I had with it actually now that you mentioned that enclosure service is there's the enclosure service itself didn't have didn't use the, the stat the status class and the bus didn't use it either so it was really just three of the services of the five that were actually using it. And according to the comments, I saw that, that there was an implied status in the enclosure and bus services, which seemed a little, I thought, you know, I, thought, I would think we'd want to be consistent with how we applied mm -hmm. the status across mm -hmm. services. Um, well, so in terms of, you know, your comment about only wanting to implement functionality that we need, it sounds like, somebody else has a need for this functionality, um, even if it's not us right now. But uh, in terms of this supervisor process that we've discussed, you know, before that can, you know, make sure that if things, you know, get 
broken, you know, we can restart them or whatever. Um, would it be, you know, would it address your concern if we went ahead and said, oh, hey, you know, before we actually uh, finalize this, we should implement it in a supervisor type of system, which I think would address the asymmetry in those couple of services that aren't using it um, and would prove that it actually is the right thing, the right way to solve the problem in the context of having this, you know, the supervisor. Um, would that address your concern? I mean, I think it, it's expanding the scope of the, of the feature by uh, a fair bit. But, um, but you know, if that's the direction we're going, then maybe it's worth uh, looking into it. But so, Gaz, I guess I didn't understand. So I, I still don't get what the need for it is. Um, you know, everything you said is was potential that I heard at least, potential need for it. And I, I don't understand how this integrates with system D and how that works, um, I guess. So, um, yeah, well, I'm not, I, I'm not a system D expert either. Um, uh, but is essentially, that what this is, is an interface between system D and, and Mycroft core. Sorry, what was that? Is that what this is? It's providing an interface between system D and Mycroft core. Uh, no, the, the, the interface is through the service hooks that are already included. Um, so this, this ties into those service hooks um, so that you can, across the message class, you can query the status of, of any service. Um, oh, okay. So this is, this is kind of like opening up all the services to being able to get their status over our message bus. Uh, yeah. Okay. How do we get that yeah. status now? Uh, we... Well, so at the moment, you know, for example, when, when Microsoft boots, it, um, it uh, does a bunch of stuff and eventually Pedacious trains its intent. So each intent is a little neural net. Um, and when it's finished training, it sends a message that says, I've finished training. And then Microsoft says, great, I'm ready to go. And so based on the assumption that everything before that should have uh, should have happened. It just assumes that it's ready. Ah, so at the moment, what, what we don't check reality, the status of anything. In reality, Pedacious could be completed, but other stuff could have broken or not be ready. And yes. how do we determine that today? Well, we just uh, don't. We don't. Okay. And so this solves a problem in that moving forward, it could be used to determine if all the services are in an operable condition at the present moment. Is that correct? Well, hold on. A, a subset of what is in this PR could be used for that. <laughs> okay. um, this does a lot more than yeah. the problem we're trying to so solve. It started, it started as that, and then yeah. it kind of it grew from that. Yeah, I'm just confused because on the one hand, I heard it doesn't do anything, and then I heard it does a lot. And I'm not sure if it does a lot of nothing or not, a little of everything. <laughs> I mean, what does it actually do is what I'm getting at. And, or why would I be compelled to use it? It sounds like it gives us some additional functionality regarding querying the, the health of some services. And I get that it doesn't give you the health of all the services yet, but it gives you a consistent interface to solving that problem is one of the things I'm hearing it does. Chris, you mentioned it does a bunch more. What bunch more does it do? It, well, okay, so... The reason we got here is because we needed to know when each device was ready, or each sorry device, each service was ready, yeah, so we could have a device it. ready state. Um, but this does more than um, telling you if it's ready. There's a an error state. There's a started state. There's a stopped state. There's states that that are included in this that are not used right now and may or may not be used in the future. Um, well, wait a minute. Let's let's just stop there for just one second. So. In the absence of anything right now, right, we don't have anything that we can rely on other than the fact that Pedacious says everything's good, to know whether everything's good. And as services are running, nobody guarantees they're not going to run out of resource, they're not going to crash and burn, they're not going to break. So periodically, uh, a super hypervisor you know, could go and say, are you ping me every, every minute? Are you still alive? If not, I'll try to restart you. 
So you're saying it offers that additional functionality. And yes, why would anybody be using something that doesn't exist today? That makes sense. So what it else? Doesn't do the pinging functionality. No, I understand that, but it gives you an interface to accomplish that functionality. Yeah, no, no, it doesn't. Both, correct? It, it doesn't. It doesn't. No. Oh, interesting. So you, so even though it has all of these additional, like uh, you're down versus you were started versus you haven't even started yet, it doesn't give you the ability to query that information anyway. Oh, okay, I, I misunderstood what you said. There, there, are, it doesn't give you the ability to query the, the readiness state, but not the other states. As it's written right now. Okay. Um, uh, or is it? It would be nice if it did, and I, I find it a serious yeah, oversight. Yeah, they, there's there's methods for each of the um, to query each of the states, so you can you can I send a you know I is alive it. is. Hold on. Well, let us let us step back and look at this from a little bit different perspective. This sounds like functionality that would be beneficial to Mycroft Core. Are we all in agreement on that? I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that's, okay. that's, that's part of my problem with it. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. And, and so what I'm getting at is that I'm naive here. Right? I'm not, I'm not, I haven't gotten into Core that deeply except for the first couple of weeks that I looked at it and it looked pretty you know, it's been, it's a hodgepodge, but it's okay. It's, it's, it's pretty good. So, um, you know, what you're saying is that there's some functionality that could be exposed here that would give us the ability to have a hypervisor periodically check on the health of the overall system. And this accomplishes that. And maybe it's not completely done, but it's a step in that direction. And so being naive, I'm saying, gee, you would think that would be a benefit to Mycroft Core to be able to know that service blah went down. The, the thing that I heard so far that's a little disconcerting is obviously it's in a loop, which is probably off in a thread. And yeah, it could be event driven where it just is, is told to wake up with a one shot or whatever, a repeating timer every 30 seconds or every minute. But um, if it's giving us an interface into the services to in the future, be able to query them and determine their health. That would seem beneficial to me is all I'm saying. I don't know enough about- Right now it does not tell you health. It checks if it's, if there's a ready check and there's an alive check. So right, maybe, right. maybe well, alive is healthy, I don't know, but those are the two checks that are currently in this class. Or yeah, in the absence of an alive response means you're not healthy, right? Yeah, maybe, I, I you know, I'm, I'm a little, the difference between alive and ready. Right. Okay. So it, no, it seems to me that well, this is alive being the services running and responding, and ready being the services ready to to do its full functionality. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, there's going to be more statuses too. There's going to be, you know, I'm going down, or I'm I'm at a critically low resource level, or whatever. Uh, so you know, um, a stake in the ground that could be expanded to. Uh, handle all of our needs moving forward would, would not be bad. We mentioned the uh, audio service crashes periodically. It'd be sure it would be good to know if the audio service was down and uh, maybe take some appropriate, uh, you know, uh, corrective action. But uh, I'm confused as to, um, Chris, you're, you're not in favor of this pull request for some reason. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing by reading between the lines. So my question to you would be why? Um, so the reason being that a, it implements a bunch of stuff that may or may not be used is one reason. Another reason is we've talked about having a service that does this, some of these, some of these things, um, and will, will this duplicate whatever that service does, um, you know, when it's written. Or will it preclude us from having to write that service? I don't know about that, um, but well, again, we haven't well talked about the service and what would we do, so we don't know. Um, okay, well, here's, here's what I'd like to do then. I think, I think we can resolve this with some documentation. So uh, if it's not obvious what this thing does, then it clearly needs documentation. So I, I'd like to ask the implementers to uh, write up a brief description of the architecture of the system, the motivation for implementing it the way it is implemented, um, how it is being used 
currently and what the expected roadmap is for how it will be used in the future because it does look like it's a partial implementation and not a complete implementation. Um, and uh, and uh, from your side, Chris uh, Bear, I'd like to get just you know a sketch, you know, like three, four sentences at most, of what you'd like to see in this supervisor or hypervisor capacity, uh, you know, that we've been talking about. Uh, because I know we haven't spec'd it out yet. Um, it's just an idea, and I think we can agree that it's a good idea. Um, but uh, you know. I'd like to get from you your top, you know, high, high level requirements as to what the capabilities need to be. And then we can share those and we can see if, you know, if that is something, if that's a destination we can get to, you know, starting with, with this PR. Okay. I can do that. Awesome. Uh, Gez, uh, what do you think about the reasonableness of my request to the, the authors of this PR. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'll be excellent. Fine. That. <laughs> I, I think that, you know, in the future, I think um, this is the kind of stuff I'd like to, well, this goes back to the discussion we had yesterday of, you know, not wanting to uh, slow down innovation, but also, you know, when it gets to a certain point and it's going to become real, we do need to, you know, uh, fully understand what we're getting into. So I think, um, you know, uh, sometimes you just have to go down the road to see where it goes. And, um, you know, this looks like one of those cases. And um, let's see if it's, uh, you know, if it is going to meet our needs on the long term. And, uh, or, you know, uh, and maybe it's, you know, maybe it's a little both, right? Maybe, uh, you know, it sounds like there, there's a group out there at least that is using some capabilities that we don't currently need. And maybe this serves, you know, their purposes, and that might be a good enough justification for including it if it's not, you know, gumming up the works in some other way. So, um, yeah. All right. So uh, now let's talk about the process for, you know, trying to regularize this and make it, you know, less ad hoc. Um, Ken has proposed that we meet on a monthly basis to review the PRs. I know that uh, Chris Gisling goes through the PRs on a fairly regular basis, right? Like almost a continual basis, it seems to me. Um, so, um, so how do, we, so what do we actually need here? What is, what is it that we're missing? Um, because it doesn't seem currently that there are more PRs than guys can keep up with, uh, but maybe that's just my perception. I don't know. So in my mind, um, there's, there's different types of PRs, right? Like if it's a bug fix PR that just is a few lines of code, we don't need a bunch of people staring at that and, and dissecting it probably. Gesm is more than capable of, of you know reviewing something like that or either I am or whoever, right? I don't think we need a big meeting for that. I think it's these types of PRs, which are bigger changes um, or functional changes or something like that that need more attention than um, maybe just one person looking at it. Um, whether that be Gaz or me or anybody else, um, you know, because we, we want to make sure that bigger PRs like this are, are fo like what we said, following whatever direction we want to go in. So I think maybe before we say we should probably, you know, categorize them in some way. And maybe we, maybe we can even use the PR system to do that categorization, right? And we already have labels on some of these, you know, if it's, if it's labeled as a bug, for example, you know, I, I, you know, I'll look at some of them, depending on what the bug is, if it's something I know about. But, um, you know, Gez does a lot of reviewing these and, and merging them without any of my input. Um, and I don't, that doesn't bother me. <laughs> um, you know, so, but, you know, if it's something like this, then I think we mark it differently and, and it goes to different broads. Um, I also, as a counter to the monthly meeting, um, you know, I was wondering if this was one of those, if, if it would made sense to, for me and Gez and Ken to carve out, I don't know, a half a day on Monday or a half a day on Friday or a whole day on Friday or Monday or whatever to, to go, you know, to dedicate to going through these. So at least on a weekly basis, you know, we were going through what's there and if people have responded. Um, so it's, it's pretty regular. And then if there's something that comes out of those reviews, um, you know, that day that requires discussion, then it comes up in this meeting. That's just an alternate solution that I was thinking of. 
Yeah, I guess it depends on how frequently these issues are coming up. I mean, it could just be that we raise these issues in this discussion and we decide whether, you know, we can um, uh, make a decision quickly uh, in one of these meetings or whether we should, um, you know, make a dedicated meeting for just that particular pull request. Uh, and, you know, uh, how, how much um, how much of our resources, you know, we need to dedicate to it. Like, you know, is this does this impact something that's on our roadmap, or conflict with something that's on our roadmap, or partially implement something that's on our roadmap? You know, that kind of thing. Um, you know, uh, and we and we need to have a more in depth discussion. Then, you know, if they're not coming in at that rapid rate, then maybe we should make them one offs. I do like your suggestion of, um, you know, getting to it within a week. Uh, I think that's that's a lot more responsive, and I feel a lot better about that. Um, but you know, Gez is seeing these all the time. Maybe you know we could just carve out a small part of the uh, um, the meeting to you know to just note to those and decide whether they're um, you know uh, controversial in any way. And then yeah, I mean, Gez has been pretty good about you know if something like this. Like, hey, you should probably look at this before we we merge it. You know, um, you know. So he's he's already mentioned that you know if he thinks that something that's more than just a few line change, he's like, hey. He pings me. He's like, "Hey, right. look at this. Maybe that we should continue. You know, guess to be the first line of defense. And if he sees a PR that looks like something that, you know, needs a little further scrutiny than he would usually give, then, you know, then maybe we, we go from there. Another idea. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to get involved in the process before it goes too far down the road, though, because mm -hmm. this has been going on for I don't know how long they've they've been working on this, but probably about a month at least, uh, and. I think it would have been good, like all these concerns that have been raised now could have been raised at the initial outset, right? I think uh, because, you know, I, I was watching some of those discussions and, you know, if uh, I don't have, you know, the same knowledge of the code base and, and you know, where we are right now as, as you, Chris, but, you know, what I saw was, was exciting to me. I'm like, oh, hey, great. They're addressing a, a thing that's going to, you know, make it easier for us to do this thing that we already know we want to do down the road. So from my point of view, I, you know, I looked at it as, um, oh, hey, there, you know, this is going to help us out. Um, but I understand that, you know, you've got a, a, a finer level of understanding of, you know, the details here. Um, and so, you know, maybe that's a discussion that rather than, you know, passively uh, hoping that we, you know, look at it and take part in that, you know, if it looks like it's going to be something that's, you know, somewhat major, you know, we highlight it. You know, explicitly at one of these meetings and, and then take it offline if we need to. Does that make any sense? It does. And, you know, part of the reason, you know, something else that may be worth discussing, part of the reason I hadn't looked at this until now is I was busy doing other things and I never carved the time out to do it. Um, you know, you guys kind of prodded me along and I, I was like, oh, I should probably take a look at this. And that's kind of what prompted all this discussion. Um, so I was wondering if there was something we could, like the guy said, like to me, you know, I'd, I could just carve out some time every every week to make sure I get to some of these that you know, need attention, rather than you know trying to wait for some break in my, <laughs> you know, the work I'm doing, uh, to and remember to to look at them. <laughs> well, yeah, and it might not even be at the level of a PR. Like some, I think some of this started, you know, uh, in the Mattermost chat channel, and you know, so things were discussed there. And, other places, right? Not not okay. just through the PR. Process. If they were, I don't even remember them. <laughs> so maybe those can be pointed out better too. If or, or, you know, or even if this one in particular didn't, like you know, they could in the future, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's you know the earliest that we can detect something that we might have strong opinions about, or that are you know that might be a major level change, and the earlier we can say, oh well, you know what, we 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 haven't actually laid out to the community what our plans are in this particular regard, but um, let's just take, you know, a half an hour and sketch out what we're thinking and then, you know, make sure we, we get that out there so that, um, you know, they can be considering that, uh, you know, as soon as possible. Okay. Okay. Um, so the concrete action item result of this is, uh, Chris wants to dedicate a particular, um, you know, Time in the week to, uh, sorry, Chris Bayer wants to take up, you know, dedicate some time in the week to uh, 
to just reviewing these sorts of issues. And I think that that's great. And if there aren't any in a particular week, then you know you get, you get that time back for other things. Yeah. Um, do we well, need we to have go into history? So the, the, I don't think we'll, it'll be time wasted. Yeah. Uh, well, and so that's another question. Um, uh, so there's two more questions. One, do we need to re, you know revisit Ken's idea of a periodic like whole group that reviews these things, or should we continue to do that on an ad hoc basis, but just try to get involved earlier from now on? Um, what do you guys think? I like getting involved earlier. Um, Chris, what percentage of PRs do you think require this sort of attention that we, I mean, how often do you think we have a PR of this magnitude that's worth the kind of this, this discussion? Uh, I'd say it's a small proportion of overall, but then, you know, I was having a quick look back through, you know, the open PRs that go back to 2017. Wow. Yeah, early 2017. And, um, you know, there's some, there's some really good stuff in there as well, like, you know, uh, support for multiple hot words uh, um, already exists. We just need to actually engage and review and rebase it and get it ready for, for the latest core and that sort of stuff. So, like, there's, there's real functionality in there that we just haven't had time to get to. Okay, so that was my second question was, how big is the backlog? And I guess it's about three years long, at least. Um, so uh, that seems like a great motivation for having a regular meeting and trying to get through that stuff, um, and uh, you know, get caught up on that because you know, having a three-year-old backlog, as Ken has pointed out in the past, is you know, not terribly useful. Uh, so um, yeah, because you know, well, I guess in all of these cases, we're assuming responsibility for these things, but we may potentially be putting off community members who. Would be, you know, yeah, it's demotivating, right? That yeah. that's the concern. Is it's demotivating uh, people we should be motivating? Yeah, there's like thirty of these out here. Okay, right now. Great. Well, it sounds like if we tackled one a week, we'd get done with them in less than a year. Um. Yeah, I think there's there's so there's thirty there's thirty three open pull requests in Minecraft Core. Um, but as we've discussed, we have quite a number of repos, and so, you know, I think we could then cycle through the intent passes and, you know, a number of other repositories to, to look at what, what exists in there. I think we've got, we've got a few. Okay. Well, uh, Chris, uh, well, I don't know sure what the right way to approach this is. I mean, it'd be great if somebody could take point on prioritizing these in terms of, you know, what your thoughts are regarding, like, the controversy level of it, the you know, useful bit. yeah, the utility of it, you know, and you know, potential impacts on performance, you know, like will this even run on a Raspberry Pi, you know, um, uh, which is not the only platform that our software runs on, but certainly impacts, you know, um, our our internal priority in terms of you know wanting to use it for uh, for the Mark II, for example. Um, so. You know, would it make sense for Gez, for example, to take a stab at these, um, or does everybody want to take a, you know, the, uh, you know, take a gander through and just kind of, you know, highlight some that they think are are important or interesting to uh, to look at, and we just create a queue of these things and go through, you know, uh, with uh, you know, put a box around how much time we're spending on it because we need to, you know, constrain that I think, um, but uh, maybe spend a, a little bit more time. Um, Especially around issues that are um, central to uh, getting the Mark II out the door, right? So, for example, for example, having multiple you know wake words is very interesting, but it's not critical to getting the Mark II out the door, right? So, finding the right balance of you know of that, mm -hmm. um, I think, will be will be important. Um, but there, you know, uh, there very well may be things in there that will assist us in you know getting to a more stable and, and shippable product. So, um, you know, likely not. I expect most of them will be uh, um, will be interesting and fun and useful functionality, but not you know not really uh, required functionality. But we should take a look. We should like, we should at least know. Yeah, I wonder if the three year old ones even still apply, right? I mean, <laughs> some of these things that are really old. I mean, maybe they've been fixed in another way, or they're oh. you know, yeah, you know, or who knows, or well, something else has been kind of addressed the issue. 
Well, some of these, some of the code yeah, has been stable I, since then, so they could still apply, right? I try and close the ones that no longer, like I have a peak every now and again, and I try and close the ones that, that really don't apply anymore. Um, okay. But, you know, there's a number here, like if we do go to the plugin system, there's, there's half a dozen, you know, STT and TTS PRs that, you know, are just different systems that people wanted to, to add in that had never got reviewed. Um, and so if we move to the plugin system, then we can close half a dozen of those. Um, there's a few language ones, which I should check in again, because that might now be uh, Lingua Franca. Um, but yeah. Um, the others are probably more, they probably fit more into the like, you know, features that are not critical to Mark II, um, but would be interesting. Okay. Mostly. Um, all right. Well, since I expect you've got the best uh, handle on these things, um, why don't you come up with a plan? Tell us, tell us how we should handle this. Uh, we can discuss it. That's what I call management. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so i think i think what I, one of the big things that I've, that I've been hearing is that we need to improve the, the tagging system for prs and like the categorization system and, and the way that we do that through tags um and that you know we have bug fixes and features essentially and then the bug fixes are like quick things versus complex and features are probably just roadmapped versus proposals or like you know something else. Um, and then I don't want to go too deep into a, you know, a five point rating scale of importance, but like, <laughs> you know, maybe something that's like a flag that's like, yeah, we probably want to look at this quickly versus this, this can fit with the rest of them. Um, so maybe I'll have a look at that and go through the, the backlog and, and categorize everything based on those. Yeah, I mean, that, that's an interesting idea. If there's a way that I could just scan through PRs and go, oh, hey, this is something I should probably look at, <laughs> you know, by looking at a tag or something like that, then, yeah, that would certainly mm. help to me. Um, and we yeah. should prioritize bug fixes over features, right? Yeah. Unless the feature is critical. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So, so I'll, I'll do that. OK, great. Okay, so that was two issues. We're at 52 minutes. Um, did we have a, well, I guess we started a bit late, so maybe 42 minutes. Um, what, um, what was our other issue that we wanted to talk about? Was there another one? I thought there were four. I'll have to look back at the notes here. Yeah, do you use PyCharm? No. Okay. I, I, I got a free license the other day, like a temporary license, so I thought about checking it out. Is it worth it? Well, I, I was just going to say they just uh, added uh, PR uh, functionality. I can, I can look at and view and comment and stuff on PRs right in my editor and compare yeah. it to the code. And, there's some pretty there's some pretty cool stuff they're adding to it. I I think it's worth it. I do. I spend ninety percent of my time on my IDE right now <laughs> because it does so much. Yeah. I also have the professional edition, which is whatever. Yeah. Whatever it is. Oh, I don't know if this is one of them, but um, do we have a rule set for black that we want to? We've kind of talked about this a little bit in the past, and I'm now throwing it out there uh, outside of the agenda, which is terrible, but. <laughs> I'll allow you. Do you have a particular rule that you use, Chris? Um, so black, um, black is black. There's no, there's no configuring black. <laughs> um, yeah, right. So, yeah, you just that's, that's part of the reason we, we want to use it is it's opinionated and there's not a lot of things you can you can change. Um, so yeah, as far as that goes, um, yeah, nothing. As far as pilot goes, um, that is maybe a. Um, an ongoing discussion, like 
Um, I've been running pilot on a bunch of things I've had, and I've I've got a, a, a running pilot RC file, a config file, um, that, uh, that where I can I've configured a couple things that didn't make like like black did one thing, but pilot expected another, so I had to ignore that because <laughs> um, you know you were just you know, little, little things like that. But as we notice them, we can we can um, keep this and you know pilot RC file that we can put it in the DevOps repository or something so that everybody can yeah. download it and use it. Um, <clears throat> Yeah. But, um, you know, like right now, I try to get a perfect score on my pilot stuff, um, you know, unless there's something like that that I need to change. So um, we could also discuss, and we don't do it right now, you know, what is acceptable from a linting standpoint. Um, you know, some places I've worked before said, you, can, you know, as long as you have a nine out of 10, it's okay. But, you know, but if you have a nine out of 10, it could be that you're, you know, what did you decide not to fix? <laughs> You know, did, 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 so I'm not, you know, where, where do you draw the line until, you know, what, you know, then another thing you can look at is that there's different levels of, of pilot issues, right? There's errors, there's, you know, convention, and there's refactor. Maybe we just, you know, ignore the refactors, you know, because the, you know, that, uh, yeah, so there's different ways we can look at how we address, how we enforce, um, you know, linting um, on our code base. The, uh, the nine out of 10 in places where I've been is because with non strongly typed languages, it's a necessity. There are objects you'll pass around that are anonymous and pilot won't be able to catch it. So in order to just won't cleanly compile code works fine. And it usually happens in factories that produce polymorphic output. So, yeah. Well, pilot will check for that, though. Well, it's not capable of catching all cases, which is why people that are adamant about pilot realize that 9 out of 10 is probably going to be the best you're going to be able to get. Um, I'm not a big fan of regular, engineering regular. in general, but yeah, for, for Python code, it, that's just me. I'm sorry, Ken, I didn't hear you. You're not a big fan of what? Linting uh, in, in typeless languages like Python anyway. Um, it, it makes people write code uh, for the purposes of cleanliness at the expense of efficiency in certain cases. Hmm. Well, it sounds like um, we don't have some clear rules to pass on to the community here, so uh, I think we should work on that. Yeah, I think with, well, with black, I think is easy. You know, just run black on your on your code. That's that's pretty cut and dry. But right. Um, but with pilot, if we want to talk more about that, we certainly can. And what our expectations are. Um, and I mean, once we know what they are, I can code them into CI, and um, you know, it's just it is what it is. Um, right. But we like to communicate them before the hands of people if they want to, to lint their code before. They submitted their PR. They could do that too. Oh yeah, yeah. That that would be my expectation, and I think that we should give the community and ourselves, you know, probably a good, you know, three months of uh, heads up before we implement any kind of strict policy based on, you know, Pilot or Black or whatever, uh, in terms of integrating it into the CI system. Um, yeah, right now yeah, I've been I've been putting comments in PRs, for example, like I you know in the last couple I've done I've like oh this. This probably wouldn't pass a pilot test, <laughs> you know. Yeah, you know, just kind of hints towards it, um, and you know, and, and I'll, I'll ask to do black if it's, it doesn't look like it's, like it's blacked. Um, so that, that's that's. Can, um, can you share your pilot file? Yeah, I'll I'll go I'll put it in the DevOps direct in the DevOps repository and and let y'all know when it's there, so you can all download it yeah. and, and use it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. we'll give it a try. Yeah. So we, we need to take a JIRA ticket uh, to uh, make concrete our um, our linting uh, requirements for the CI system. And then, you know, we need to probably take some sub issues in terms of rolling that out to the community and, you know, re reviewing it internally and making sure we all agree on that process and that sort of thing. All right. Okay, congratulations, you've snuck in an extra issue. Uh, <laughs>
All right. Uh, so that's it, actually. I went back and reviewed our notes. Um, we don't have any other topics on the agenda, so unless there's any other uh, surprises people want to bring up, uh, we can call it for today and pick it up on Monday. And next week we're on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uh, normal time, right? Correct. Okay, good. And, and again, there's a little bit of a distinction between the meetings. Can we just go over that real quick? Monday is different than Wednesday and Thursday, Friday? Yeah, I think on Monday we're generally trying to, um, before the meeting, everyone should go through their JIRA tickets, uh, fix up the status on them, make sure that there are any new tickets that are uh, that address the work you expect to do, you know, for the rest of the week, and uh, basically, so you know, Monday is kind of our, our day to review, um, you know, review and plan for the work that we're you know doing for the next week. Review the work from the last week. Make sure you've closed out the proper tickets or updated them accordingly, and um, and then create any new tickets for work that you're going to be doing, you know, for the rest of the week, and. Uh, and then, then we'll have the meeting. We can review that, and um, and then Wednesday and Friday are about um, just checking in on issues like this. You know, things that come up during the week, or making sure that um, you know we're just keeping the communication channel open, and getting getting problems uh, solved. Okay. All right. Uh, so I want so so basically Monday is uh, the day you should come to the meeting prepared with your tickets up to date. Correct. Got it. All right. Um, yeah, and if uh, you know if you had somebody who was uh, actually managing this process, they'd be sending you reminders and stuff like that. But hey, you know, there's only four of us, three, four or five of us, whatever. Uh, we should be able to do this. So, um, yeah. So that's it. All right, then everybody have a great weekend, and uh, we'll uh, we'll look forward to talking to you on Monday. All right. Talk to you later. Yeah.